So I'm going to do a little experiment today. Firstly, I'm going to do this. guys got what are you drinking what is on the menu so I woke up and I felt good got on with a few bits and bobs and had a little uh, internal Question, what tea would I like to drink today? And the answer was, Chopin tea. So, this is the second bowl of the day. Just taking a minute wherever you are to uh, relax and maybe take a few conscious breaths as you become present with your beverage. Maybe think of one thing that happened this morning that was really cool, like a, a satisfying experience that you've already had today. Anything, or maybe even just a satisfying thought. Because what's the difference? I think some of you probably will have, but if you've never looked into placebo and nocebo and uh, Bruce Lipton's work, that is a, a gorgeous world of science to just just have a little look at and then, and then either spend many years reading more on or leave, but placebo being that I can sit here now and, well, in one sense, one sense of the word placebo, and I can think to myself, whoa, when I look at that smoke and I smell it, this sage, it's cleaning the air, it's cleaning myself and it cleans my nasal passage. And I believe that, I feel it, like I really feel it. I can really go into the thought and the emotion of feeling that. That kind of leans towards the placebo world. Uh, more scientifically, they do studies where they'll give a certain group of people a, uh, a drug with compounds in it that they have studied that they're trying to uh, sorry, that they have uh, derived, that they are trying to study to find out if they have a physical effect on the human body in the way that they would like. And then a certain percentage of those people will be given a sugar pill. So something that is just basically uh, doesn't have the active compounds uh, in it. And they'll find through the placebo that uh, just the thought of taking something uh, can have a physical effect on the body. And then you've got nocebo, which is the opposite. If we believe or think that something is going to affect us in a bad way or negative way, then that also, uh, unfortunately, has that potential too. And now's just a, a really, just magnificent time to be looking at that. To be really like just taking a moment to go, wow, if I believe, it's like it's not just, it's not just a hypothetical, it's that it's, had many, many, many years of, of research to, to show that placebos do work. If I believe that something works, or if I believe that it doesn't, that may have a physical effect on my body, or may have an effect on my physical body. So as I sit here and I say to you, well, oh, think of one thing that was awesome that happened today. Like, cool, because you can go into that mindset and then suddenly there's a there's a, uh, a chemical reaction somewhere in the body that feels good. Maybe there was oxytocin or dopamine and or whatever, whatever just happened, happened. And then I said, and if not, just make it up or just think of one. Then the reason I said that is because
It was mum calling, I better call her back afterwards. Uh, that just links directly in with the placebo of if I, if I just make it up in my brain, then the body can have a physical effect of something beautiful happening anyway. Like, yeah. Yeah, man, nice one, Brett. It, it's like... And again, it kind of links me back to just sitting in Vipassana for the, well, the first 10 day retreat and then some of the other shorter three day retreats in silence of like knowing that when I take everything away, again, my personal experience, when everything is gone and it's just stillness and meditation and basic uh, comforts, definitely basic comforts like food and, and sleep, uh, shelter, that, that physically, the, the physical experience can be incredible. And then, yeah, just just like a world of a world of potential, just in here or is it here, wherever it is, that we can think something can physically affect the body. Think of a beautiful thing that happened today, or just make one up. So. Whatever you're drinking there, if you've got your tea, maybe you've got reishi chaga, uh, whatever your tea is or lion's mane today, uh, enjoy it for a moment, be present with it. I'm going to have a, a, few, a few mouthfuls of this. And that's an interesting one to explore in conversation with other humans of like, where is the conversation? Where, what is the conversation about and what are the emotions around that conversation? Is someone bringing conversation about the potential problems or the potential opportunities? Yes, it's good to be uh, aware of if this happens, then here is an action. Uh, it's good to be aware of the things, I believe, good, the things that are happening in the world and also not to get carried away in the drama. And it's easy to sit here drinking a tea and say, because when... Is that working? Oh, I think we're out on this one. When... Quick, while the water's still a little bit warm... If and when the phone rings and someone gives you some news and you're like, ah, then that's obviously very present in reality. But these mindful practices, being with your tea, being doing meditations, knowing that you can direct your thoughts into a... Ah, here's one for you. And this isn't mine. This is just, uh, this is something, a really beautiful one that I learned actually through, uh, through Abraham Hicks, just profound stuff. And it's this kind of my interpretation of one of them. If someone's in a bed with their face down, depressed, not able to do anything, just so um, in that state, not that it's right or wrong, just that that's, that is an experience for a human that they may be going through, then to go from that to pure bliss and joy, it's quite a big leap. Like there's quite a, a dissonance between face down, bored and, and whatever, in despair on, on, with a face in a pillow, to joy. And then so one step out of that face down in the pillow and being in that situation might be a step up might be some sort of movement or even anger because out of complete apathy and, and non-movement, some sort of animation is like a step up. That's not to say that to move into anger and to be angry and, and aggressive, no, but to move the emotion from complete apathy to some sort of movement. And then from that, from some sort of anger place to oh some sort of action and the action might be you know i'm going to complain about something and take official action and whatever, whatever it might be and then these little steps up like laddering 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 and then there's this whole spectrum of life that we go through these different phases where certain emotions and certain experiences put us into certain states or we choose to go into certain states through those certain experiences perhaps 
better said. Uh, and that's something I learned through uh, the, the tumour I had removed in my early 20s from my shoulder. When I lay on the bed and I just kind of realised, I was like, I chose it. I, I experienced that because of my mindset at that time, my experience of life at that time. And that was a big wake up call. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And I just came from that, from the, the choice of how we respond to these reactions and why a mindful practice, whether it's meditation or tea meditation and the physical effects of these teas, the mushroom teas and the foods that we choose can help us, can help us create a tiny little moment, a little glimpse, a little pocket of light, a little window between a stimulus and our reaction. lovely and just take a moment with your beverage whatever it is to be to be with it to feel the cup to notice the tastes and or if you're not drinking anything if you're just listening just perhaps notice something around you that you didn't notice a minute ago perhaps a uh, Perhaps a sound, perhaps a colour, perhaps a, uh, an odour in the breeze or a, a tree or your pen. I don't know what it might be that you're doing with your keyboard. Just to observe something else, just to become more present to the physical surroundings that you're with right now. And then if you want to, just to put that attention inside for a second and notice around the stomach area. How does it feel there? Does it feel tense or relaxed? Can you tune in deeper to certain areas around the stomach and within perhaps? Perhaps you can put your attention in the esophagus area and feel the sensations there. And, and, and as you do, maybe you can feel greater relaxation in that area as you place your attention there. Greater stillness and calmness. Without judgment, noticing perhaps a, a held tension that has now Relax a little bit more. And so I mentioned at the beginning of this live, if you were here, that I was going to do an experiment. And the experiment is, I talk a lot about communication between tongue, brain and gut. Reishi's the mushroom that's going to stay with me forever. I love it. It's called love reishi because it is associated with feelings of harmony and love and calmness and immune support and many studies and thousands of years use. And I want to talk at some point as well about the, the link between the reishi mushroom being found in the wild and then the connection with the emperor of the time and uh, the responsibilities of the, the sages or the people finding it. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a bit more about that at another time. But uh, today I'm gonna talk a little about dosage. And again, I'm not a doctor or would I? I'm definitely not going to be one either. <laughs> In the, the formal sense. Um, about uh, how much to uh, drink and how much is right for you. And so some people will drink reishi like this in hot water and have like, ah, just bitterness, astringent, offensive mouth taste. Now, I think I've already made a mistake in the experiment. It's not what I wanted to do, but it's okay, we can remedy it. So, It's about finding the balance between a really offensive amount of reishi in the mouth and, and an amount that is actually going to be uh, perhaps enjoyable, perhaps not too bitter, but has some of those kind of natural um, tastes that come from this mushroom. I was going to build up, but I got all excited and just filled up the bowl. <laughs> And I can't remember their names for the life of me, but the, these guys were discussing about uh, the amount to 
add in and relating that to the communication between the tongue, the brain, the organs and the gut and perhaps if it is if there is something that you're eating or drinking or you've noticed in the past like like I always remember uh, as as a kid certain foods would be like oh really offensive to the mouth and perhaps that was a message from my body saying hey hang on not that much yet or not yet and so this is about half a teaspoon I've done here now that's a bit more than half a teaspoon so for me that's not offensive like I enjoy that that's bitter reishi uh, is is it's a, a bitter mushroom? This jewel extract, and that's a that's a good sign of potency as well. But there's listening to the body, listening to the mouth, listening to the sensations, and also afterwards. Like, if I drank fifteen liters of water now, something pretty serious would happen, and that would be my body saying, "Hey, you know, fifteen liters in a wanna isn't necessarily the the right choice." <laughs> And it would probably, that would have probably resulted in, in a bit of time in the bathroom and perhaps something else going on, I don't know. So afterwards, and this is why it's important, let's go there, to look at your poo. To notice the different digestion sensations and the movement and the regularity and, and that world, again, this is just through experience and having lived with doctors of Chinese medicine for a little while and going deeper into Eastern medicines and, and tuning into my own health journey as well, is that these, there are signs from the body all the time. So that for me was definitely a, a, a good amount of reishi. I could go further with that and I will. I'm going I'm to up that a little bit. So I'm gonna have this and add a little extra in there. And I'm just gonna do it twice, because I really don't wanna drink like a liter of reishi right now, but just for the taste example. I don't have a dry spoon, so I'm going to be really risky here. Right, cool, perfect, that's what I wanted to do. So what I've done there is I've kind of super dosed that. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to offend my mouth. Oh yes, this, this looks offensive. I want to clean that bowl because it's uh, lovely bowls. All right, so here we go. And I've got some some little chunks of it on the spoon there. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> that's almost <laughs> it's almost like a super potent marmite. That's interesting. So. I've made a really strong reishi here. <coughs> you know, <coughs> I'm just coughing because it went down the wrong hole, but that's not that wildly offensive. I mean, it's strong. Like, I wouldn't drink it to that strength every day. Especially having eaten a little bit off the spoon. The beautiful thing with reishi is like, if I instantly, it kind of like, the mouth taste and the mouth feel I'm fine with, like the bitterness, the stringentness, and especially in a coffee or a hot chocolate, however you're gonna make it, fine. I, I, I like it a lot. 
inside I get this, I always have a beautiful sensation with reishi inside. There's like this, as, as I drink it, on the first, second, few, a couple of mouthfuls, and I notice it after events or after I've done a talk more so than anything, is I notice my system just goes, oh, and it kind of calm, it just literally, I literally, and again, perhaps it's placebo, but I don't know what it is, but I know that that's what part of the world of Reishi is, is calming, 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 soothing, uh, balancing the immune system, balancing the human. And I drink it and I just, oh, it's just lovely. This this really lovely sensations around this area. Oh, I think, <laughs> I think I found my new dosage level for Reishi. I think it's like two teaspoons. just such a lovely sensation and it's just it's a food it's like it's not <laughs> you gotta be careful with this it's a it's it's a food thousands of years use and like decades of studies on it one of the most well studied things on the planet and uh it, this reminds me of the uh <laughs> this reminds me of when I was with Jay and Joy, uh, the Jing Slingers, if you ever want to check those guys out, such a beautiful couple. Met them in LA, um, and they looked after me a lot through uh, through my my integration into Los Angeles, and then like learning and and also like they were kind of like my go to. I was like, hey, this is going on. How do I? What do I do? And one time I went over to their house. Um, when I was in the states, I had a, I had a red Jeep. And uh, it was an old Jeep, it was like a, a 92 or something. And I'm driving up one of the freeways and there was a slight incline and it was, <laughs> I knew nothing about cars, but I just thought, ooh, that looks cool, that's a good LA car. And uh, I'm driving up the freeway and suddenly the power went in the car. It was just like, I got to say 20 miles an hour <laughs> on the freeway in the, in the slow lane. And I finally got to their house, parked up, and I was all hot because it was like 30 Celsius, no aircon in the car. Uh, it, it was a soft top Jeep, so the, the roof was like, it's like basically in a tent, a 30 Celsius sitting in a tent. <laughs> and I get there, and, and I was a bit stressed out. And um, we were doing like an interview, and they were going to do some different, um, different herbs and things for me. And I have to find the the interview, because Jay made me this concoction. It was it was heavy with reishi. It was like super dosed with reishi. And he gave me this drink and I drank it. And he said to me, do you feel anything? And I was like, mm, not yet. Because they know they, they know I knew that I, I wasn't really, um, I don't really drink alcohol, like maybe uh, a couple of times a year, a glass of red wine um, uh, or, or tinctures. And uh, so I, for these herbs and these foods, my body, feels the, the sensations and then a few seconds later he goes what about now <laughs> and then that was it it was a uh, lot kind of like now <laughs> about 30 minutes of continuous talking and, and expression <laughs> so fascinating so fascinating the reactions of these foods and reishi is a real heart opener it's a real like it's a real beautiful food Whew. And it's cumulative as well. It's not just in the moment. Like the, the, the years of relationship with these foods, years of relationship with humans, like you can go deeper, you can learn more, you can receive more information, you can communicate at, a, at, a, at a, 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 an incomprehensible level. Like knowing someone in a moment versus over 30 years. Friends that I communicate with now that I've known since childhood, or even since like mid to late teens, like the, the ones that we've, we've kept in touch, the depth of communication now and understanding, that's how I think of these foods. That's how I think of tea and how I think of uh, the, 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 the information, the, the food that goes in and, and then, and again, just to conclude this with how we kind of started leaning into placebo and nocebo is like, as I take my mind into the place of what a beautiful, powerful mushroom and food this is, 
that is well studied, that has thousands of years use, that is connected with the immune system, that is is revered and respected for supporting the immune system, knowing that whatever I do going forward is I've just basically had a a moment and a, a number of years of experience with this supportive food. Contrast that with a pint of Stella, <laughs> if you wish. All right, you beauties. Gemma, how does it make you feel? Well, I guess that kind of, uh, maybe that was a, uh, an expression of it. It just makes me feel calm, it makes me feel open. I think for me, more than, more than anything, it's open. I feel like I'm able to uh, let go more, speak more, release more. When I'm speaking now, I can feel a different part of my physical body resonating as I speak. Uh, yeah. And then it's the, it's the cumulative long-term effects as well of like one or two colds in seven or eight years. Right, I just, and it's not, obviously not just one single item, it's a whole life of whatever uh, experiences we've been going through. But yeah, it's, it's lovely. So nice one. So good. Cool. All right. Um, See you guys soon. This will be on for 24 hours or so and I'll probably post it on YouTube too. I have been posting these videos on YouTube so if you ever want to go back and have a look, they're on there. Um, you know how to find it. Just YouTube Enriched Superfoods Tea. Uh, have a lovely day. Thank you for popping in.